watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and we have switched from promoting nonprofits to allowing candidates to promote themselves, candidates for mayor, council at large, city council, and school committee. Today in studio, I have Jimmy Pereira. Welcome, Jimmy. Sure. Nice to see you. Likewise, likewise. How's it going out on the it's campaign going trail? It's going good. Going good. Doing what we can to make sure that we're engaging as many people as possible. Now, you, like me when I ran, have yes. a full-time job. I do, yes. You work at Oak Colony Planning Council. Correct. So I assume, tell me if I'm right or wrong, that you can't just take off for the summer or in the no. fall and, and run for office. Exactly. Can so I, you're working full-time and running. I am. Full-time. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So what got you into the race? Why did you decide to step up to the plate? Several reasons. One, uh, being born and raised uh, in the city of Brockton and knowing the ins and outs of the community, uh, growing up in a single mother household, actually and being uh, at risk youth myself, uh, going to different places as well. I ended up in the foster care system because I was an average youth and in Springfield I was able to get uh, mentorship and guidance, went to a vocational school, learned sheet metal and welding, Find that, went to Westfield State University where I actually learned geography and regional planning and community planning. I minored in ethnic and gender studies, so I was, uh, I was equipping myself with the tools that I needed to actually make a change here in Brockton. Once I graduated, I went to work for the city of Springfield as a healthy design coordinator. There, I actually engaged the community of Springfield, a population of 153,000 or more, and we were looking to influence them on uh, in raising awareness about bicycle pedestrian uh, infrastructure and behavior patterns as well, and actually introduced the city to their first bicycle lane. So I worked with the planning department, the engineering department, a conglomerate of nonprofit organizations, the community itself, and city hall and city councils as well on bringing change to the city. Uh, now they have their bicycle pedestrian plan and they're continuing the efforts that we started uh, some, a few years ago. Uh, but coming to Brockton, I wanted to come back home to my family, my friends. I had my first daughter and my son was on the way. And I wanted to make sure we uh, make change here in Brockton. So I made an investment. I bought a home and uh, luckily I got the job at the Old County Planning Council. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that I'm engaged in the community. Another thing, not just from my experience in uh, working with the city, but my attempts to engage uh, the city as well. I wanted to come in and work for the junior planner position. Didn't get that opportunity, but uh, as a Brocktonian, I was very persistent, and there I pursued the uh, job at uh, Old County Planning Council. I tried to join the planning board on two separate occasions, put in a letter of intent, did not get any uh, uh, re response from that. And I also finally asked the uh, current administration to sit down and ask questions about being a public figure, or running for uh, city council or any other uh, opportunities. And again, on two separate occasions, didn't get an opportunity to uh, com converse with anyone for uh, Mondays with the mayor. So that didn't happen. And it, to me, I reflected on it and it seemed that if it was happening to me, then it must be happening to a lot of my other community members. So I wanted to take a uh, change. I want to take action rather than sit on the sidelines. Okay, so mayor's race, big race, citywide, yes. 28 precincts. Right. Um, I see some of your signs going up, knocking yes. on doors, talking to people. What are the issues yes. you are hearing yes. from people in the Brockton uh, oh, and or the issues you're running on? They may right. be the same. Yes, very much uh, similar. And for me, it's a, it's a conglomerate effect. It's not just one problem. It's a, a conglomerate of problems. So they all come together and you have the issues that we face here today, homelessness, uh, taxes, uh, education as well, looking at the deficit and making sure that the quality of life is, is uh, moving forward as far as the improvements that we need in the city. Uh, you look at vacant buildings and you look at accountability as well when we have uh, West Elm Street and the demolition of that and how that was uh, miscommunicated with the, our representatives, uh, elected officials. And uh, those are the issues that I've seen, uh, lack of communication and lack of engagement of the city as well. Communication is very key, it's very important, and we want to make sure that people know what's going on. Uh, when there's events happening, we want to make sure that you know we have it on the city website, we're promoting it as well in a timely fashion, and that we're getting out there to the people, not waiting for the people to come to us. Let me ask you a question about communications. Yes. I'm just curious, okay? Um, we've dealt with, I've dealt with, uh, I go back from Farwell yes. to Units, yes. to Harrington, to right. Belzotti, to now Carpenter, yes. five mayors, yes. okay? Communications, Right. this mayor happens to communicate more mm -hmm. on TV than past ones. How would right. you communicate differently? Would you yes. would you use cable? Would you use social media? What what are your ideas? I would use all available avenues. Okay. That is the way that I work. I like making sure that I don't put all my eggs in one basket because if you focus on one or two areas and forget about the rest, then you're going to be missing a, 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 a portion of the population. So I want to make sure that we are using telephones, we're using social media, we're using using the tele, television, and there are also out there knocking on doors and getting out there to the community. Uh, what I want to do is create neighborhood associations or increase neighborhood associations. 
and actually have a concrete uh, design of these neighborhood associations and know where they are, uh, have their, their charters and their member, members as well, so they can help disseminate information. They can help also uh, disseminate information from the community to the city hall and vice versa as well, help out the city councils as well. Uh, and this has been evident in other communities such as Springfield, Boston, and other communities that are tight knit. Now the mayor is not just the mayor. No. The mayor is the chair of the school committee. Exactly. The mayor, I think, serves as like the chairman of the bad advisory council. Right. He has a he a or roles. she has a lot of roles. Correct. Okay. So tell me what you would do differently than this particular mayor if you got elected. I'm I would all the challenges. I, uh, definitely, I, I, I appreciate the question. And what I would do different than this mayor is engage a lot more people, be out there a lot more, especially uh, visiting businesses, patronizing businesses downtown. I work in the city, of course, as you know, uh, and the region as well. But when focusing on work in the city, I bike to work, I walk to work, I take the bus to work as well, uh, and seldom really drive if, if need be. But making sure that I'm visible, that I'm not just in the office or I'm not away on different uh, expenditures or, or different uh, trips and things of the sort, but make sure that we're here in the community focusing on solutions. What I've learned through my academics is problem-orientated approach. You look at the problem, you identify solutions, you implement them. If they do not work, you go back to the drawing board. If they do work and succeed, then you continue to do it and make any uh, changes that may be necessary along the way, but you make sure that you provide these solutions and work hard on those as well. So. Sounds like a planner's approach. I, yes, I, I, yes. Okay. And I did see the bike in the lobby. Yes. The bike is sitting in the lobby. So let me ask you some of the big issues that are out there. Our right. desal plan. Right now, yes. we've been talking desal since Jack Units was the mayor. Right, right. That's when it was built. It's 10 years old. Right. Um, this mayor wants to buy it. Right. Lock, stock, and barrel own it. Right now, we're paying a lot of money. We for are. a lot of nothing because right. we don't get any water. Exactly. So, and there's also another a couple of councillors have floated the proposal to speak to the MWRA mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. back in the day when the power, when the the desal plant was built. Right. Uh, MWA was a four letter word. Right. It was it was not even an option. Exactly. What do you think about something like that? So I like again making sure that we look at all of our options. So not just looking at purchasing the desalinization plant, I would like a appraisal of that and make sure that we are looking at the true value of it and make sure that we are having transparency through the, through the process. Um, but that's not the end all be all. Looking at MR, MWRA and other resources as well, not just MWRA, and looking at uh, cost-effective ways of engaging in a second uh, source of water, but also looking at long-term effects as well. So looking at the gray water system and looking at how we can improve the recharge, the regener uh, of a, a regeneration of uh, the, our aquifers as well. So looking at, again, the gray water policy and looking at how we manage our water systems, uh, the, the meters as well, and uh, the infrastructure along with that as well. And making sure that we plan accordingly rather than be reactive and not wait till we have an emergency for us to have our hands tied behind our back and have to buy bottles of water at a at a at an inflated price for us to make sure that we uh, provide safety and, and comfort to our to our community residents. Now, recently there was an issue that happened in a neighborhood with a permit. Correct. We were pretty outspoken on that yes. issue. I I've heard, and I'm not taking this position, so just mm -hmm. understand I'm a journalist and well, I'm certainly. bringing. Uh, Jimmy's a really nice guy. Yes. But he went a little too far right. when he said that the mayor had blood on his hands. Right, right. How would you respond to that? What I would say, if you love the city as much as I do and you have passion for the city, then you would know that we need to do more. When we talk about our at-risk youth, when we talk about accountability, when we talk about communication, engagement, I feel that this administration has not been doing, going about that accordingly. You have a permit. You have protocols that you follow through. I've read the fine print. There's supposed to be a police detail there. You're also supposed to provide access to the fire marshal uh, so they can see that you know there's no hazards there at the event. And you're also supposed to make sure that you're not blocking the street. They had fences up. And if there are communication going on throughout the night, see, again, being an at-risk youth, I have experiences that I can share with anyone. I'm comfortable speaking about my experiences because I learned from it and I hope other people learn from it. Mm -hmm. So when you're out there and if you're a delinquent and you notice a police officer there, I can guarantee you that you're not going to stay around there for too long. And if that police officer spots you there and you're a high-risk individual, they will make a phone call to headquarters and let someone know, hey, this person is in the vicinity, maybe we should patrol the area, let things know. If that process was followed throughout that night, 
I can guarantee you that people will be more aware that this is a high intense environment that we should be more uh, attentive to what's going on. And that's what I meant by saying the current mayor has blood on his hands because he wrote off on the permit and made sure that he said, this is your city. You don't need a police detail. It's in fine print. We want to make sure that we take care of our community by being accountable and making sure that we are not cutting shortcuts. It's about the beauty and the detail and make sure that we follow those details as well. Education. Uh, I just got the five minute cue, so I want to make sure I leave two minutes left for you yes. to tell people your website, your phone number, how to get in touch with you, et cetera, and sell yourself. Yes. Last question is education. Yes. City is talking about reinstituting the lawsuit to get Brockton's fair share of the money that right. we need for education. What do you think about that? Less than two minutes. Yes. Um, Mayor uh, is chair of the school committee. Exactly. I'll keep it brief. I do agree we do need to apply pressure on the state. Uh, I like more of a uh, dialogue, but sometimes you need to put uh, uh, fire to the feet to make sure people are moving. And I think we should also look at other solutions and not just focus on the lawsuit because that's going to take a long time. What I want to do is also look at having investors come into the city, such as Google, G&E, and looking at other investors in the biotech firm, the uh, technology, the robotics firm, uh, the, the robotics section as well, and having them engage our students as well and put dollars into the, to the, uh, the school infrastructure. So, for example, Sprint came in and gave 500 devices to the right. school systems. More of that, more of the bridging the opportunity between schools and the, the tech industry as well. That's what I want to do. Give me the three minute cue, you get two of it. Yes. Forget I'm here, Yes. talk to the voters, Great. give them your information and sell yourself. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Brocktonians. Again, my name is Jimmy Pereira. I am running for mayor of Brockton. You can find out more information on www.jimmyforbrockton.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Pereira for Mayor. That is P-E-R-E-I-R-A for Mayor. And I would implore you to please do your research. Look at all of the other candidates. Look at the history of Brockton and the history of each candidate and even the current administration and make a sound decision on who do you want to lead this city for the next two years or even for the next 10, four, 10, 10, 20 years. We want to make sure that we are painting a brighter picture for the city of Brockton. We need someone that has a plan, experience, and the heart to make sure that we move this city forward. Thank you for your time, and I hope to have your vote. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank Appreciate you, sir. for being here. We'll have Pleasure more focus on the mayoral campaign. It's going to whittle down to two. Yes. And then we'll get to the general election in November. Let's so thanks it. for joining us. All right. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linder, your host. Stay tuned for more election coverage on channels 9, 12, and 98. It's city issues, it's school issues, and it's community issues. But most of all, make sure you do your civic duty. Yes. September 19th is the preliminary election. Please do vote. Yes. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.